Good morning. This is the way to a wonderful life. Please know with me now, right now, there is a power within you that can lift your life to its highest level. It can change illness into health. It can bring peace amidst turmoil. It can bring success out of failure and victory out of defeat. It can bring companionship and happiness out of loneliness. It responds to you. For this is the power that dwells within you, and so it is. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning for The Way to a Wonderful Life. I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates, coming to you live from Palm Springs, California, teaching the philosophy of of the mastermind Jesus, the evolutionary science of mind. This program is not pre-recorded, nor is it edited. It is live. For more information about this ministry, please visit www.revbates.tv or www.revbatesontheradio.org. You can also find me on YouTube.com. Just go to YouTube.com and put in the search box, The Way to a Wonderful Life Channel. That's The Way to a Wonderful Life Channel, and you'll find over 50 audio videos of my radio presentation that you can listen to 24-7 in both English and Spanish. You can also find me by going to MSN, Yahoo, Bing, and Google by just putting in the search box Reverend Henry Bates, that's B-A-T-E-S, and you will find everything you want to find out about this ministry. Now, this is a healing and a teaching ministry, so you can write to me and send me your prayer requests, your questions and comments about this program. You can send those to Reverend Henry Bates, that's B-A-T-E-S, P.O. Box, 1173, that's P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. That's P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. And you can leave me a message in the Los Angeles area at 818-476-0088 or in Palm Springs at 760-778. Five six seven seven. As I stated before, this is a healing and a teaching ministry. So every prayer request that's sent to this ministry is held in the sacred confidentiality in which it is sent. And so we will know, and we will believe, and we will accept that we can believe in our prayer and the answer to it as we pray with faith knowing and understanding that this power, this intelligence, this spirit of God responds to us by corresponding to our faith and our belief in it, and our faith and our belief in it. And before we go to our wonderful life message for today, I want to say some, wonderful, say some words for the wonderful Whitney Houston, who we said goodbye to yesterday as she moved on into new life, into the spirit, and we can know and we can pray for her friends and her relatives and and her child and her husband, uh, her ex-husband, I should say, because each and every person that came into her life, came into her life is feeling that absence, feeling that 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 passing today, and we know and we pray and we, we believe that, that Whitney Houston is now with the angels and that as we fade into God, we fade into the good and that which requires healing is healed and that which requires knowing and understanding that that spark of the divine that was within Whitney Houston that, that moved to her beautiful voice and her beautiful music that blessed each and every one of us for many, many years, that that remembrance of her will continue in our hearts and in our mind and in our soul. And so we, we pray for her and we know that, that she is with God and God is with her and that we are always in the presence of the presence, both here and in the hereafter. And so it is. Amen. So once again, this is The Way to a Wonderful Life, and I'm Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates coming to you live from Palm Springs, California. This program is not pre-recorded, nor is it edited. It is live. Our Way to a Wonderful Life message for today is a perfect you, a perfect you. And I have some wonderful words here from the great James Dillett Freeman from his book titled B, that's B-E-B, and he writes, You are a special creation of God. And only in you can God fulfill himself. You are a living soul, original and unique, wonderful and strange. 
Do you think that the wind-tossed, cloud-piled sky is vast and moving? Your life is, is no less vast and moving. Do you think that the sun is splendid and necessary? You are as splendid. You are as necessary. You are one with the God who fashioned the human soul and made it so wonderful and strange that even you who possess it cannot see its full extent or meaning. You are one with the God who made life and made it so interesting that he himself enjoys the living of it. As the leaves are a part of the tree, as the sands are a part of the earth, as the cells of your body are a part of you, so you are a part of the Spirit of God. That's from James Dillett Freeman and his wonderful book titled B. That's D-E-D. A new commandment I give you, said Jesus, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you follow me if you love one another. And so as we approach this, this holiday or this celebration of Valentine's Day, let's start bringing a greater awareness of, of love into our life, a greater awareness of the spirit that is within us, a greater awareness of, of that that's in the world that is wonderful and glorious, rather than that which is disturbing and that which is, uh, which is seeking to diminish the value of each and every one of us by the noise and nonsense that, that diminishes all of us based on the labels and the, and the, the lack of awareness of the Spirit in the world. We must write up in our mind and declare that the Spirit of God is within all living things. We must rise up in our mind and realize that not only is God the Spirit, but God is the power and God is the intelligence that permeates all things. And that if we want to truly, truly understand our relationship with God, we must use our intelligence, our God-given intelligence, as we read in the book of James, for he has given you a sound mind so that we can discern the things of the world from the things of the Spirit. And as the great Louise Hay reminds us, if we are willing to change our thinking, we change our life. It is a simple process, but a process nonetheless. It often doesn't happen quickly, for there are thoughts that we have that we are conscious of, and there are thoughts that are so habitually a part of us that we are unconscious of them. And for the most part, the culture in which we live supports so much of our thinking that separates us from each other and in turn separates us from the Spirit of God within us, from the Spirit of God within us. But within us is a victorious spirit and a power to choose that God honors in us through love and law. It is up to us to be committed to making the changes that will bring us ever closer in mind, ever closer in our heart, and ever closer in our soul to that which is God, that which is good. Now, no one can teach us to be grateful and no one can teach us to love thy neighbor as thyself. Both of these arise from the Spirit of God within our soul. There are many people who will never experience genuine gratitude or genuine love for their neighbor, for they have imprisoned themselves in the beliefs of the world. For us to try and teach them these things would be a waste of our time and an annoyance to them. Jesus gave the commandment over 2,000 years ago to love one another. And he said this would be evidence of following his teachings and beliefs. In this commandment, he is instructing his followers to see the Spirit of God in everyone. In other words, love them without conditions and without exceptions. What he meant by this, love thy neighbor as thyself, can be found in the parable of the Good Samaritan. To love our neighbor, we must first realize that everyone who comes into our experience of life is our neighbor. 
And then we must be willing to support them in whatever good they seek to experience or whatever their need may be at the point where we meet them, at the point where we meet them. To the mastermind Jesus, this commandment was a call to expand our own consciousness, to realize that whatever we do for others, we do for ourselves. And as Louise Hay so often states, our every thought is an affirmation. Our thought of indifference to the needs of others is registered in our very own consciousness, and we will realize the consequences of this indifference in some way, shape, or form. Most likely, not from the person who we were indifferent to, but in some aspect of our life, we shall experience indifference. Indifference. <clears throat> when we have the realization that we are one with the God who created us, then we shall also realize that everyone is one with God, and in the Spirit, we are all connected and subject to love and law, and so we love our neighbor, so to love our neighbor to truly, to, is truly to love ourselves in a more deeply meaningful way. So to love our neighbor is truly to love ourself in a more deeply meaningful way. When we have a deep and abiding love for ourselves, we shall seldom be challenged to love our neighbor as ourselves. This loving thy neighbor has less to do with what we do, but more to do with what we think of others. And as Louise Hay <clears throat> reaffirmed that every thought that we have is an affirmation. So it's up to us to realize, are my thoughts about this person, are my thoughts about my neighbor, are my thoughts about anyone, are my thoughts of God, or are my thoughts of the world? Are my thoughts of God, or are my thoughts of the world? When ideas and desires come to me, are those desires and ideas, are they of the Spirit, or are they of the world? We must ask ourselves these things. We can't go through this life unconscious and, and expect to realize the glory of God in our life. As Reverend Richard Kingsley wrote in his book, He That Hath Love, the difference between the mystic and the man on the street is that one walks in conscious realization of the presence, the unfolding presence of love, and that is God, and the other walks in the world. One is awakened, and the other is asleep. We must be awake to life. We must be awake to that image and likeness of God that's imparted within each and every one of us. We must be awake to the Spirit if we shall live this life full of joy and happiness and peace and harmony and beauty, because these are the things of the Spirit. These are the things of the Spirit. The, the power of love is part of the Spirit. The intelligence, the wisdom to make right choices and to realize the consequences of our choices before we act too quickly, that is a thing of the Spirit. Intelligence is part of the Spirit. This, this presence of God, this presence of God is the, that is always enfolding us, pressing against us, surrounding us, is always, is always looking for us to live life in a more joyous way because this joy is part of the Spirit. It's looking for us to, to realize that life, life is a beautiful harmony and unity. So when we love our neighbor as ourself, we understand this unity of life in a greater way, and therefore we create create within our own consciousness a deep and abiding love, not only for our neighbor, but for ourselves as well, for ourselves as well. Dr. Frank Richelieu writes in his book, The Art of Being Yourself, and as I've mentioned before, <clears throat> I recommend that everybody go to barnesandnoble.com or amazon.com and buy this book. It's titled The Art of Being Yourself by Dr. Frank Richelieu, and that's R-I-C-H-E-L-I-E-U. Buy this book. It is an amazing book that will keep you steadfast and immovable in your faith and knowing and understanding that there is a power that's greater than us that's seeking to express life through us in the most beautiful and wonderful and glorious way if we just let it, if we just let it. So Dr. Frank writes, I no longer seek after love. I no longer try to love. I know that universal love is within me and is the core of my being. I do not create it, manufacture it, force it, or find it. 
The only thing I can do is to realize that love is what I am and what divine spirit is, what, what others are and what the world is. I let myself be love and expression today, for this is the natural, natural expression of my being. This is the natural expression of my being. Let's go back to those words from James Dillett Freeman from his book titled B, that's B-E. He writes, you are a special creation of God. Now, another wonderful thing to take into your heart and your mind and your soul as we approach Valentine's Day, you are a special creation of God, and only in you can God fulfill himself. You are a living soul, original and unique, wonderful and strange. Do you think that the wind-tossed, cloud-piled sky is vast and moving? Your life is no less vast and moving. Do you think that the sun is splendid and necessary? You are as splendid, you are as necessary. You are one with the God who fashioned the human soul and made it so wonderful and strange that even you who possess it cannot see its full extent or mean. You are one with the God who made life and made it so interesting that he himself enjoys the living of it. As the leaves are a part of the tree, as the sands are a part of the earth, As the cells of your body are a part of you, so you are a part of the Spirit of God. That is the absolute truth for each and every one of us. That is the absolute truth for everyone, even if they're not awake to that truth, even if they have no realization of it, even if their faith is in the things of the world rather than the faith in God that either here or in the hereafter at some point in time, they will be awoke. They will wake up to this truth because this is the truth that the... Krishna was teaching the truth that Buddha was teaching, the the truth that Isaiah was teaching, and the truth that the mastermind Jesus discovered and realized and was attempting to teach each and every one of us. We must take into our mind that the things of the Spirit, the things of the Spirit are of God. Now, no one can teach us, as I stated before, no one can teach us to be grateful, and no one can teach us to love thy neighbor as thyself. Both of these arise from the Spirit of God within our soul. There are many people who will never, ever experience genuine gratitude or genuine love for their neighbor, for they have imprisoned themselves in the beliefs of the world. For us to try and teach them these things would be a waste of our time and an annoyance to them. So we must let them go. We must release them and let them learn whatever they need to learn, and they will learn it. They will come to that realization, for the Spirit of God within them is powerful. The Spirit of God with them is intelligent, and the Spirit of God with them is moving through their heart, their mind, and their soul, and telling them to understand and know, and if they refuse to know, they may not, they may not have that realization here. They may have it in the hereafter. They may just have it in the hereafter. So we, when we, excuse me, when we have the realization that we are one with the God who created us, then we shall also realize that everyone is one with God. And in the spirit, we are all connected and subject to the love and law of God. And so to love our neighbor is truly to love ourselves in a more deeply meaningful way. When we have a deep and abiding love for ourselves, we shall them be challenged to love our neighbor as ourselves. This loving thy neighbor has less to do with what we do, but more to do with what we think of others. And so we take it into our mind, and we realize just as the air that we breathe, what if we refuse to, to, to allow ourselves to exhale? Because every time we exhale, we're sharing the air that moves through our lungs. We're sharing the air that moves through our lungs and through our nostrils with, the, with everyone in the world. So as we take in this air, we're taking in the air that other people are breathing too, the air that is moved through the nostrils and the lungs of everyone else. And when we exhale, we're letting that, that sharing that air that we breathe. It's, all, it's a life. It's oxygen with all those who inhale 
them. We don't know who they may be, but we do know that we are connected with them in the spirit, and that the same God that imparted its image and likeness within us imparted its image and likeness within them. So we may label them as the world does, as being separate and apart from us, but nature, the law of God, the intelligence of God, tells us, don't you know that when you love anyone, you are loving God? Don't you know that when you are sharing and, and, and caring about anyone, that you are sharing and caring with God? And that's why Jesus said, love thy neighbor as thyself, because that neighbor is a part of yourself. It's part of this unity of life that God has created. So as we learn to, to accept everyone unconditionally and know that the Spirit of God is within them, that they are all doing their very best to to the level of their awareness, to live their life, to, to live through their choices, we can know and we can understand that that spirit within them will reign supreme at some point in their life experience, either here or in the hereafter, and they shall find themselves loving their neighbor as themselves, too. Soon we will be celebrating Valentine's Day. It is a day devoted <clears throat> to love and romance. But it can also be a day devoted to loving thy neighbor as thyself, loving thy neighbor as thyself. And in doing so, we shall find, we shall find that the love we feel for ourselves shall also be enriched and enlivened, enriched and enlivened. There is not one person reading this message or not one person listening to this message, I should say. People are going to read it later on the, on the RevBates.tv message page. There's not one person listening to this message that when a thought arises, rises within our mind, knows whether it is of God or of the world. We all know it. We all know when something comes into our mind, whether it's of God or of the world. If it's of God, it never diminishes anyone. It only lifts them up. If it's of the world, then it's got a label attached to it so often with a negative connotation. If our thought is not one that identifies with love, we can drop it. Drop it and let the thought of love enter into our mind. And I suggest that we do this, especially when we're thinking about ourselves. No one is perfect. No one. But we all can be perfect for a moment. We all can be perfect for a moment. And it is, this, and it is the love that will give rise to a perfect you in those moments that it is important that we be so. It is, this, it is those moments where it's important that we be so, that love will give rise to that perfect you, that perfect me, that perfect everyone. Once again, I want to impress, impress upon our mind today these wonderful, wonderful words of wisdom and intelligence and spirit and power. James Dillett Freeman wrote in his book, B, and I'm not sure when this was written, but I, I know the copy of the book that I have is very well worn, so I know it had to be several decades ago. But I want to impress this upon us because we're going into Valentine's Day. And I was reading in the New York Times that there's over, there's so many people out there that don't have someone in their life for Valentine's Day that they're single. But I thought, no, we're not single. None of us are solitary. We are all a part of the spirit of everyone. And if we love our neighbor as ourself, we shall find that that loving our neighbor as ourself, that willingness to extend the spirit within us to love and understand and believe and, and have faith that, that as we are called to help our neighbor or to love our neighbor or think good thoughts about our neighbor or pray for our neighbor if that is necessary, that that spirit within us will heal any thought, thought of loneliness or any thought that being single is anything solitary, but that we are part of this moving, loving, joyous expression of the spirit in all things that we do, in all things that we do, and we will be blessed and we will be, be enabled to realize within ourselves a more deep and abiding love for ourselves as well. Once again, this is James Dillett Freeman from his book, B. He writes, you are, let's change that to we are a special creation of God, and only in us can God fulfill himself. We are a living soul, original and unique, wonderful and strange. 
Do we think that the wind-tossed cloud pile sky is vast and moving? <clears throat> Our life is no less vast and moving. Do we think that the sun is splendid and necessary? We are as splendid. We are as necessary. We are one with the God who fashioned the human soul and made it so wonderful and strange that even we who possess it cannot see its full extent or meaning. We are one with the God who made life and made it so interesting that he himself enjoys the living of it. As the leaves are a part of the tree, as the sands are a part of the earth, as the cells of your body are a part of us, as the cells of our body are a part of us, so we, so we, that's you and me, are a part of the Spirit of God, and so it is, amen, and so it is, amen. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, everyone, underline that everyone, that includes you and me. These are from the, the words of Jesus, John 13, 34, 35. By this, everyone will know that you, that you and me, Follow me, follow me if you love one another. That means we must follow Jesus even when I'm following the words of Jesus, the principles, the love, the, the wisdom of Jesus, the intelligence of Jesus, the faith and belief of Jesus. When we follow Jesus, even if it contradicts everything in the world, including religion, including the pastor, the minister, the rabbi, the priest in your church, let's follow Jesus because Jesus has given us an eternal principle. Jesus has given us an eternal commandment to love one another as I, that I being that infinite eye of God expressing itself through the words of Jesus, that I will have as I have loved you. And so it is. Amen. Once again, it's been my great pleasure to have you with me today, and I hope you join me for my next broadcast right here on KTYM AM 1460 Radio this coming Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Pacific Time. Also on at KTYM AM 1460 Radio is also simulcast on www. KTYM.com, and you can join me Monday through Friday, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, if you live in Delaware, <coughs> Bal uh, uh, Maryland, including Baltimore, South Jersey, parts of Virginia, and Washington, D.C., you can find me on WKDI AM 840 Radio, Monday through Friday, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and soon that broadcast will be on the Internet, so you can listen to it on the West Coast at 6.30 a.m., and that, too, is a live presentation of The Way to a Wonderful Life. Once again, you can go to RevBates.tv or RevBates on the radio, Dot org, and you can find more information about this ministry. You can listen to previous broadcasts of my radio presentations on YouTube.com by going to YouTube.com, putting in the search box, The Way to a Wonderful Life channel, and you can also go to MSN, Yahoo, Bing, and Google and put in Reverend Henry Bates, and you'll find everything you want to find out about this ministry. This is a healing and teaching ministry, so please send me your questions, your comments, and your prayer requests class, and they will be held in the sacred confidentiality in which they are sent. You can send those to Reverend Henry Bates, P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. Once again, that's Reverend Henry Bates, B-A-T-E-S, P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. And you can also call me and leave me a message in the Los Angeles area at 818-476-0088 or in Palm Springs at 760 778 Five six seven seven. Once again, translations of my weekly messages on RevBates.tv, that is the written messages, are available in English, Spanish, and Italian. And you can also find audio videos on YouTube in both English and Spanish. Now, this program is an independent project of RevBates Ministries and is solely supported by your donations, your faith offerings, your love offerings, your tithes, and your, and your contributions to this ministry. So you can go to RevBates.tv or RevBates on the radio.org, and you can use your ATM card 
or your credit card to make a donation, a tithe, or a love offering through the PayPal secure system, or you can send that love offering, faith offering, tithe, or donation to Reverend Henry Bates, that's B-A-T-E-S, P.O. Box 1173, Pond Springs, California, 92263. Once again, this has been a, a wonderful, wonderful message for us to have this, mo- this morning before we go into to Valentine's Day. And once again, we had the opportunity to pray and to know the truth for Whitney Houston as she moves and transitions into that, that, that life and hereafter where she will find that, that God is present with her just as present, just as present as God is with us here, right here where we are. So we know that there's all, it's all God all the time, that there is no thing other than God, either here or in the hereafter, and so we can know and we can understand that that realization of that perfect truth, that loving response of God to our life, to our thoughts, to our prayers, to that good desire within us to to realize a greater, a greater understanding, a greater experience of the Spirit, the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of love and happiness and joy and peace and harmony, and truth shall be found for all of us. At some point in time, we will have that realization, and we will awake to this higher truth, this realization that that which is of the Spirit often contradicts that which is of the world all too often. And as we take the thought of the good in our mind, as we take the thought of God in our mind, we can know and we can believe that God will respond to us by corresponding to our faith and I believe in God.